Now that was our first example of a hypothesis test. Hypothesis tests use all the same concepts uh, uh, that we use when calculating confidence intervals, plus we're going to introduce a few more concepts. And the goal of hypothesis testing is to evaluate a claim about a population. So we have a sample, we generate some statistics from the sample, and we use those sample statistics to evaluate some sort of hypothesis about the population. Here's another example involving air quality. Air quality levels in the Wasatch Front may be changing due to changing, climate cha changing climates in the southwest. Scientists believe that the long-term average PM2.5 in the Salt Lake Valley is 30 micrograms per meter cubed. 100 air quality samples taken in 2013 indicate a mean of 35 micrograms with a standard deviation of 20. Based on this study, can the scientists be 95% sure that air quality has changed? So let me try to parse this out for us. The pre-existing hypothesis about, the, uh, about air quality in the Wasatch Front is that average PM2.5 PM uh, levels should be at about 30 micrograms. So this was the prevailing logic about what the air quality in the region is like. The scientists then go out and take a study of 100 air quality samples. So we have n equals 100. And we found that the average PM2.5 across those 100 samples was 35. So the x bar, the sample mean, is 35 micrograms. And the standard deviation of air quality across those 100 samples was 20. So this is what's known so far. Classical hypothesis testing is a six-stage, a six-step procedure. So I'm going to introduce you to the six steps, and as we do that, we'll apply the six steps to the question of uh, the pre uh, from the previous slide. And just to see that we have that on the in mind, the question is, can the scientists be 95% sure that air quality has changed? So in other words, can we be 95% sure based on the fact that the mean air quality that we collected was 35, can we be 95% sure that the average air quality in the, in the valley is not 30? The sample mean is 35, but can we be sure that the population mean is not 30? So we're going to start off our discussion with stating the null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis, which is denoted H sub 0, 0 for null, is a statement that there is no significant difference between the mean of a population and some, hypothesis, and some hypothesized mean. So typically we express the null hypothesis in this way, but sometimes you'll see it in this equivalent second way. But let's focus over here. What this is saying is that the null hypothesis is that mu, the population mean, that's mu, equals some hypothesized mean, mu sub h. Okay, so the null hypothesis for, for a one sample difference of means test, which is what we're covering today, is always going to have this form. The population mean equals some hypothesized value. The alternative hypothesis is a statement that there is a significant difference between the mean of a population and some hypothesized mean. And in this, uh, so in this, we have three different cases for an alternative hypothesis. The first case is that the population mean does not equal that hypothesized mean. This is called a non-directional case because the difference here could be positive or negative. Uh, the, the population mean can be greater than, that than the hypothesized mean or it can be less than the hypothesized mean. The two directional cases here are uh, restrict the alternative hypothesis to either mu less than the hypothesized mean or mu greater than the hypothesized mean. So now let's apply this 
to our question. Step one is to state the null and alternative hypotheses. So the long-term average PM25 levels in the valley, in the Wasatch Front, were 30 micrograms per meter cubed. This is the prevailing level of air quality in the valley, and we need to prove, or we are asked to see if we can prove whether or not this value is still a likely uh, uh, mean value of air quality in the, in the region. So in that case, the null hypothesis is that the population mean equals 30. The prevailing logic uh, is that the mean air quality hasn't changed. The mean air quality is 30. The alternative hypothesis was, if we recall the question, can the scientists prove that the mean is no longer 30? So we haven't asked them to prove that it's greater than 30. We've just asked them to prove, is it different to 30? And therefore, the alternative hypothesis, the, tr the thing that they're trying to test for, is whether or not mu doesn't equal 30 anymore. So the alternative hypothesis is that average PM2.5 is significantly different to 30 micrograms per meter cubed. If the question had said, and in this case it probably could have said this, can the scientists prove that the air quality has worsened or that PM2.5 has increased from 30, then we would have used this directional hypothesis that the, me that the mean is now greater than 30. But the, qu the wording in the question just asked for, can, is the mean still equal to 30? And therefore, the alternative hypothesis is that it is not equal to 30.